Alright, so this will be a tutorial for Whistleblower 100%. The main goal of the speedrun is to get all 31 collectibles in the Whistleblower DLC. And that's 18 documents and 13 recordings. Before I actually go through the route, there's a couple of things I want to go over. The first thing is a video for the door glitches. Uh, Captain Ryan on the Atlas Guides page on speedrun.com made a very good tutorial. I think he did a very good job. For the various door glitches that are used in both this game and the base Outlast game. And he actually did a very good job explaining it, so in my tutorial that I'll be doing here, I won't be explaining them in depth. So just look at that before you watch this. The other thing I want to go over is the timing for this game, because the timing for this game honestly is a little odd, because we don't even start at the first chapter here, and instead start at the second chapter, which is Hospital. And that might seem kind of strange to you, that we start the second chapter and we just don't even start the run at the first chapter at all. And that is because, well, well for one, the, the first chapter is very long. It's about seven minutes or so, I think, last time I timed it. And Underground Lab is filled with a lot of cutscenes and we just make it a boring watch. And we have to cut that out in order to you know, get more accepted, more acceptable into marathons, just so the viewers at such marathons don't have to watch all the cutscenes. There's also a certain checkpoint in the first chapter, again, which is hospital, that you want to start after runs. And I'll show you that right here. Oh, well, apparently I loaded the wrong save. <laughs> My bad. This happened earlier, and I don't know why. I guess I just accidentally loaded the wrong chapter. There we go, okay. We, and even though we start a hospital, which it, in, in which already we're skipping the first chapter of the run, we don't start time there. We don't even start time when we select the chapter from the chapter menu, because at the, right at the beginning of the chapter, we have to wait for this guy to open the door. And him opening the door is actually what you want to wait for. That checkpoint right there, that's when you want to start time. And of course you want to start moving when that checkpoint appears. If you wanna if you or if you want to look use that checkpoint for reference later, it's this hospital free checkpoint. The checkpoint names here you, you, I mean the names here that you see don't really appear unless you nickname the checkpoint names. There's a guide on Spirit on this outlast guides page on spirit.com as well that where it tells you how to na nickname the checkpoint names and if you don't na nickname the checkpoint names let's say for example we we're in the hospital chapter so that all the checkpoints would just be hospital 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 and say we we're in exit so all the checkpoints for that chapter would just be exit 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 and we get very confusing and kind of hard to decipher where you are so just nicknaming the checkpoint names like this 
makes practice uh, and also in a way in some cases just running the game a bit more efficient and with that let's go ahead and run through the route alright so first things first we have a door boost to do right at the start here get it all right with that and with this door boost you actually want to crouch as you're getting on top of the door because otherwise if you don't you get stuck on top of the door like this and can't move and just move through these two walls and go into this cutscene, or not this cutscene, this area. This event would normally happen if you're in this hallway, but because we went out of bounds and just went in this room, the cutscene that would normally happen here isn't triggered. I'll just go through this hallway into the vent. Coming up here is something I call a time recording. Kind of what a time recording is, is it's an event where we have to record enough of it in order to get the recording we would get from it, or we don't get the recording. And of course, in a 100% speedrun, if you don't get a recording or a document, you have to reset. <laughs> but actually getting the recording is fairly simple. It's not like extremely tight, you just record those two guys like that, then move backwards and record them like that. And recording, even recording them for just that short amount of time gives you the recording when you exit this vent. And you can tell you got a recording because so you'll see a camera in the bottom right and vice versa for a document. You'll see a notebook in the bottom right. Almost like a little notification. Alright, so do a door glitch off of the store. Doing this particular door glitch is pretty tricky though because you have to open it from this direction compared to most other doors that you would do a door glitch off of that where it's actually way easier where you do it that way but anyways once you do that hit this button and walk backwards with your camera up in order to record this event and you want to try to keep your camera on these two guys at all times when you're next to this door in order to get the recording I haven't necessarily tested this recording to see if you need to keep really need to keep the camera on at all times, but I usually do. I just go up to the store once the glass doors close and you'll get the recording. Oh, then go around this corner and pick up this document. Alright, coming up is yet another time recording like I explained earlier and this time it's with the famed Campbellist Venera and again it's pretty simple you just have to keep your camera on as you move around this corner you can move backwards right here to do it and you and to ensure that you can get it you can just wait a split second and you'll get the recording the risky source draft for that area would just not wait at all but and just go straight for it while keeping of course while keeping the camera on Monera but that's again that like I said it's a bit risky and you have the chance of just knocking the recording if you do that let's just run through this area and get the key to the crematory document around this corner. Go here and get it. I 
I'll just use the key on the handcuffs here in order to unlock the door. And go up to this door, but don't go through this door to the Monero cutscene. Instead, do a wall ride off of this door. And this sort of visual key you can use in order to consistently get it is make sure your camera is around right here. And you'll be clipped into the fence. And just run along this fence with up left or holding up left while you're doing it until you get to this object. Now this object is blocking your way and you can't really move any further. So press C to get past it and you'll get through it easy peasy. There's a document in here, go in and pick it up. go to the opposite side of this stack of boxes and climb up it as well. And there's sort of two things you can do here with these two edges. The other thing that Finat does in his 1913 run is he d did sort of a double edge run that I honestly find very difficult so a bit of an easier thing to do here is to jump around right here and just move to the right along the sledge and shimmy across it. It's only like really a tiny bit slower, like maybe 5 seconds slower, or 3 seconds slower than what Finat did in his run. So it's a bit of an easier method you can use. And also, what, I'm doing, what I just did right there, which is called butt bounce, is actually fairly simple. You just jump as soon as you hit this crate, in, in this particular instance, and just keep jumping with the right timing. Pass when you're here if you want to try to avoid damage. It's actually kind of difficult too, but it's not like too big of a time loss if you end up getting hit by him. Get through that wall by pressing the lean button while moving forward. And then do a wall right off of this door, hopefully. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And you kind of have to wait here for Glossian to get past this reference point that I'm pointing at right now. And once he's past that reference point, you can sort of YOLO it by going through that door and then going to this point where you clip. And when you get here, swipe your camera to the left and you'll end up out of bounds. Oh, whoop, I went the wrong way. One sec. <laughs> I went the wrong way there on accident. Alright, so once you're through that, there's sort of one or two things you can do to get out of bounds. The thing that's the faster way, which I just did, is by simply like swiping your camera to the left like I showed you but the other thing you can do is run along this wall until you get about where my camera is pointing and just swipe your camera to the right and then run to this vent quickly in order to avoid falling to the floor below me and you'll get out of bounds that way as well then run over here to this gas valve crouch once you get near it and then once you get to this wall you get stopped and spam jump to get up and interact with the valve Do a door glitch off of this door if you want. And then backtrack to this area, or the area where you would get, where you would go through here to get to the gas valve, which we of course skipped by going out of bounds. Backtrack here to this document and collect it. Alright, so this, this event is pretty weird that we're going to be recording here, and you're, you can kind of see why, because this guy is just standing up, and the toilet is gone actually, I think, no toilet's still there, but basically why this guy is standing up, um, because of the out bounds that we did earlier, we didn't really trigger this event, so we go into this event to record, where this event is to record it, this guy is improperly loaded in, that would normally strangle the doctor that you see on the floor here. And when a character is improperly loaded in in Outlast, they just kind of have this stance where they're standing up with their arms spread out, and it's pretty funny. 
just kind of clipped into the stall there. Anyways, that's the last recording of this chapter. There's one last thing we have to get before we leave, and it's a documents in this little hallway right here. And you can do a jump, running jump to it, but you have to be kind of wary of the jump because this box and this chair right here can get in your way. So just be kind of wary of that as you're doing your jump to get to the document. That is the end of hospital. And if you have five notes and five documents, you're good to go. Alright, so this chapter is one of the two most difficult chapters of the run, and that's because we have a pretty tricky jump to do here right at the start. Move, push, or point that camera up at the window as Minera comes out. You only need to point it for a very short bit before you get the recording. And right here, we're going to do a skip that's called within the Outlast community, aptly named the Scary Miss Skip. And the goal with this skip is to get on top of this door right here, or I guess this gate looking thing, to a somewhat precise jump to get on top of this pillar, and run over there to skip having to go through the mist, hence the name. It's not really an extremely difficult trick in terms of like actual difficulty, it's just that you have to jump at a very precise spot. Anyways, do a door boost to get on top of this door. Come on. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with this. Ah. Come on. Gosh dang, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with this right now. Ah. Come on. There we go. Okay. So position your cursor around right here, I think is a good angle. That's about right, around right there. And then just sort of rev your sprint by moving back and forth on this door in very short bursts. And then when you feel confident with the jump, go for it. And you should end up on the pillar. You don't want to jump too early though, you want to try to jump as soon as you get to the tip of the door, I think is a good point to jump. And this particular jump can actually take quite a bit of practice. It's one of the more difficult tricks in the game. And probably the most difficult one, to be honest. Alright, there we go. So once you do the jump, move around this pillar. There's this invisible box right here, but you don't necessarily have to worry about it. You can just go around it by tapping W or forward if you're on console or something. And then just run along this fence and drop down, and like I s explained, that skips how you do go through the mist, hence the name of the skip. Anyways, jump here and use this wall to break your fall so you don't watch the falling animation. And coming up we'll be doing yet another wall rider glitch, and this skips having to deal with the naked twin encounter, and naked twins encounter rather, and having to wait for them. See where they're right here. And just hold D once you're at this intersection right here to get through. Then go over here and zoom in to record this guy. Oh, I got kind of lost there for a second. There's a document in here. Go ahead and pick it up. And this, I'd say this chapter alongside Courtyard 2 is sort of the calm before the storm because Vocational Block, which is the chapter after those two chapters, is probably the most difficult chapter of the entire run. There's a lot of precise tricks and also finicky, or a couple of precise tricks rather, and also some finicky outbounds that we'll be dealing with in that chapter. Alright, so do a wall rider glitch off of this door. And 
Now this is actually similar to what the 80% strat would do, except what the 80% strat would do is go between these two desks, neutral jump, and then fall down. And you immediately go to the chase sequence with Chris Walker, and you can just go straight to the end of the chapter. But of course with 100%, we can't do that, because we need to get a collectible that we would actually end up skipping if we did that trick I just did, that we would use an 80%. So what we do for the 100% version of this track, if I can just do the water go tree quick. So what we do for the 100% version of this track is go to the corner of this desk, run to the opposite side, and the corner of this wall, and sort of peek your camera to the left like this and you'll see a checkered floor on the bottom of the screen and a sort of gravel floor to the top right of the screen you want to try to get to that gravel floor to talk to a guy to get the next recording it's actually father martin this guy you talk to and to do that you need to neutral jump and then spam right and jump it's fine if you end up getting on this side of the wall it's fine if you get to this side because you can just open the door and then cord him. So you don't need to worry, necessarily worry, about getting stuck in that wall or anything and not being able to get that collectible. Go in and get this document in this room. And then just go to the end of the chapter like you normally would with the Chris Walker chase sequence. End prison. Alright, so courtyard two or yeah, courtyard two is fairly simple. There's not really any glitches that you do. So you don't need to worry about any glitches to perform or anything like that. That could be pretty tricky. Anyways, go in this room and collect that document. here and open this gate. And there's this there's this chapel or school looking room right here. I think it's a chapel. More like a prison or something like that. Go here and pick up this document. I don't know if it's a school or a chapel. I'm assuming it's a chapel. <laughs> And a little optimization that you can do here. You normally would have to just run down these stairs to get down there, obviously. But a little optimization that you can do if you feel like it is jump at the top of the stairs, save the travel time it would take to go down, or time it would take to travel down those stairs. Alright, so keep a camera up for this event because this shot, this event right here that would normally happen, also gives you a recording if you have your camera up, so keep your camera up for that and get that recording. Again, jump at the top of the stairs if you want to. Alright, we are now at the second switch. This is the second time we're going to hit the switch, and right after we hit the switch for the second time, a enemy is going to come after us and try to hurt us. In fact, I think he actually spawns right behind us, so we can do this to avoid him, which is just walk backwards while holding shift, and we, you, we pretty easily get past him with that. Pretty easy way to avoid him. 
Now, like I said earlier with Monero with the outbounds clip in hospital, it's not necessarily a huge deal if you get hit. It does waste like a tiny bit of time though if you get hit because of the knockback that happens whenever you get hit. Anyways, dude, a door, a wall right off. Oh. What? What? What is that? I actually didn't expect that. Usually he doesn't catch me when I do that clip. But yeah, that, do that door, when you get to it, is opened at just the perfect amount for you to do a door right, so you don't need to do move it any extra amount or anything you can just let go of it and move along the wall to do door ride and that's skip time to go through this building and once you get out of the building hopping through this water a little time saver there and this, you just saw it by you drop down go turn around and record it before you go in this building and like I was saying earlier that's that and the prison chapter was sort of the calm before the storm. Now we are at the pretty much the hardest chapter of the speed run, which is vocational block. And you'll see why it's a pretty hard chapter very shortly. There's a very finicky uh, bounds, like I said, and also two of the toughest two the two toughest tricks in the run that we have to deal with. Right, so first thing you want to do is hop on this ledge and then just simply move right into this little curve in the railing here and that lets you go up here and onto this invisible platform which you can see if you turn on the debug here there's a guy for that on speedrun.com as well to tr for the debug inputs but anyways move once you do that move along the invisible platform even though I died on accident. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> that was my bad. I was trying to go back to show you the invisible platform and then I fell off. <laughs> That's my bad. So I'll have to do that again. <laughs> Alright, so anyways, since you're on this railing, go to around this point of the railing and then side hop using upright like this and now and you'll land out of bounds here the thing with this out of bounds is that it's extremely finicky as I said and the reason it's such a finicky out of bounds is that the is that the screen is just constantly blinking in and out when you try to move out of bounds here so a method that I use to deal with that is just to jump repeatedly on this railing and that helps with it right, so once you get to this railing drop down and then run along this railing until you see this guy up here. Want to? Oh, come on. That works. <laughs> Just drop down and record this guy, and then go go through this crawl space here with the jump scare. Alright, so with this recording, or no, not with this recording, with this document, it's actually kind of finicky as well. Not nearly as finicky as the out of bounds, but <laughs> it's still pretty finicky. Because the pickup hitbox for the document and to hide under, and the hitbox for hiding under the bed are sort of right next to each other, especially if you approach it at this angle. So you could run at it like this and then accidentally hide it and accidentally hide under the bed. So just what I do to kind of avoid that is just go at this angle so I pick the document instead of accidentally going under the bed and then push this it's usually about one and a half pushes or so and you can go through So you can wait for this guy to come through the door and try to dodge him, but you can just climb on this ledge instead. It's a bit faster. He 
you can pick up this barrier if you want to before doing this upcoming skip, but when you do this upcoming skip, if you fail it and you end up having to reload your save, it gives it refills your batteries automatically to two batteries out of ten, so you don't need to worry about battery management there. Alright, so go around here and then peek around the corner to get this recording. And we are at the skip called the Groom Skip now. We just do a wall rider glitch by vaulting off of this table right here. And neutral jump to get out of bounds. And this is where the tricky part comes in because you have to be at a very specific spot out of bounds, which is actually right about here. And your timing with the upcoming and your timing with the upcoming impa has to be pretty specific. You have to press backwards and crouch at the exact same time, like that actually. And then immediately after you do that, press pause the game in some way, shape, or form. You can use the escape menu, or you can use this menu, which is notes not come into menu. And a thing I recommend doing before doing this trick, if you want to at least, is to bound the notes and documents menu to middle mouse button so and that allows you to when you do the skip right after you do the inputs like I said you can just press middle mouse button and that will immediately pause your game right after you do the backwards and crouch input and then once you do that you fall down here where the end of the Gluskin cutscene would be saves about six minutes anyways take your camera out and sort of zoom in on that saw to get the recording try to avoid glusking here by jumping to the side in this case I was successful but sometimes you can time it wrong and you end up getting hit alright press W and Q in this corner to get out of bounds and then jump back in and this deloads Gluskin so he isn't chasing you while you're doing this next wall rider glitch because I'm pretty sure trying to do this glitch with Gluskin chasing you would be just pretty much impossible <laughs> he would pretty easily kill you but anyways do a water glitch off of this door. Oh, I failed it. I have to try it again. That was actually a good clip. And then move along here. Make sure you run along the edge of this so you don't accidentally lose your small hitbox. And then once you get to this corner, it's like the object with the wall wire glitch we did in hospital. Or at least the first wall wire glitch we did in hospital where we have to crap, press crouch to get past it, so do that, and then just run along this roof, out of bounds. And this upcoming area we have to do in a specific order, this by the way is where you end up, right here by the way, is where you would end up with the 80% skip. But anyways, and you can drop out, you'll drop in bounds here because this ceiling has no collision, so you just fall in. And this upcoming bit we have to do in a specific order, which I'll show you here, close this door, do a wire glitch off of it, what? not wire glitch, door glitch off of it, like that, and do a wall wire glitch off of this door simply by holding left click and backwards, that closes the door quickly like that, and then backtrack to where the big cutscene where Gluskin tries to hang you would normally be. And then go back to the fountain since there's a document there we need to collect. right there. You kind of have to move back and forth to collect it because that hitbox for that document, is, or pick up hitbox for that document is a bit finicky. And after you pick up that document, go back here to where the Gluskin hanging cutscene would normally be and just simply zoom in your camera on Gluskin here. What? Hold on. Okay, we got them. So, we just got two recordings at once, which is kind of strange. The first one that we got is the Bluebeard's wives here. And then the other one we got here is the Widower, which, or a Widower, which would normally appear when you, after you go through the cutscene and have your camera out. And that happened because the first time we go through here we're supposed to get the Bluebeard's Wives recording and the second time we go through after the Widower 
or not the Widower cutscene, the cutscene where Gluskin tries to hang you, like I said, we would get the Widower recording. But because, and it's our first, technically our first time going through here since we just got here, but since we did hit the checkpoint at the end of the hallway, it assumes that we've already watched the hanging cutscene with Gluskin, so it gives us the Bluebeard's Wives recording, assuming we've, it's our first time going through here, but also assumes it's our second time going through here, technically, since we also hit the cuts or checkpoints at the end of the hall, so we also get the Eight Widower recording. So we get two recordings at once there, it's pretty neat. And then just backtrack to the end of the hall and go on to exit alright and hospital, and not hospital, exit, there's not really anything like hugely d difficult that we need to worry about, there's like really one door boost at the very end and that's it alright so keep the camera up and record this burning chapel to get a recording And with this recording, you don't really have to wait for the whole conversation to end. As soon as you, as soon as that guy starts saying, "Let's just say he's dead," you can leave, and you'll still get the recording. All right, go in this room and pick up a document right here. And just go through the rest of this area as normal. As you normally would, I mean. Alright, so go here to this darkened room to get the last document of the run. And we still need to get recording of the run obviously there's still one more we need to get but the problem that comes up with that is that there's this boring cutscene that we would normally need to watch before we can do that so what we can do is one of two things we can do this door boost here or you can do what fiend that does in his 100% run that's currently up on speedrun.com I recommend looking at that to see how to do it and I find this door boost method here to be a lot easier So bad at door boost today, I don't know why. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Alright, so position yourself around right here, and you want your foot, left foot, to be sort of partially in the wall, like it is right now. And once it's partially in the wall like that, oh god, position myself again. Slide off to the left, and you'll end up in this room, which is actually where Miles entered the game, or entered the asylum on first game. Alright, so get off the sledge by by holding backwards and lightly tapping C and fall off the sledge and sometimes you can actually get pushed to the right yeah, to the right because of the hitboxes that you can see here on the ledges. For some reason it doesn't go away when I drop the debug. But yeah, you can get pushed to the left when you do that fall, or not to the left, to the right when you do that fall because of the hitboxes on that ledge. And just simply go through this wall because it's non-existent. And bring your camera up for this last recording. Go around right here, I think it's good. And and Blair will spawn in and you'll get the last recording of the run. And timing ends when Miles' hand, or when Waylon's hand touches the Jeep at the end here. As this is standard with every whistleblower run. And I believe the leader or rules state that anyway. But anyways, once you hit time here, there's you can do this little notes and documents check at the end to see if you have all of them. And I'll count them really quick. So, if you have... So 
So if you have 18 notes, I'm silent because I'm counting. So you have 18 notes and 13 documents at the end of the run, you're good to go. So I hope that helped you. I think this is a fun run, and I definitely recommend anyone watching this to pick this up, and I hope this tutorial was helpful. Enough hard evidence in that video file to make a world of shit for our friends at Merkel. We got out of Mount Massive alive, and we've done everything in our power to cover your tracks. But our enemies are twitching and malicious corporate paranoiacs with resources you're too moral to imagine. We won't be the only target. Anyone you care about, your wife, your child, they'll do nothing to Merkel but ways to hurt you. I need you to understand the bridge you're crossing here. You will do irrevocable damage to the company. You might even get close to something like justice. Once you click upload, your life is over. Everyone you love is fucked. But it's the right thing to do. Is hurting Murkoff worth that much to you?